Congratulations, you are a member of a Community Action Board of Directors or Advisory Board. That also means that you are a part of a national network of over 1,000 community action agencies and programs that offer opportunities for economic self-sufficiency to people with low incomes. You bring expertise and experience to the Board of Directors, and you have a reputation of volunteerism and community service. Always be willing to ask questions about the work of Community Action and be open to discussions with your fellow board members and the agency director. This video will help orient you to the work of Community Action Boards and help you gain some understanding about processes, procedures, and strategies that are critical to Community Action's success. Let's examine what is most important and where we should begin. What is the mission of Community Action? Are there any laws that tell us how to function and do the board's business? What specific information or documents do I need to assist in my understanding of Community Action Board Service? The foundation of the work of Community Action is expressed in mission. This is how we launch our work and allows us to center our action. As stated in the Economic Opportunity Act, Community Action focuses on the reduction of poverty, revitalization of low-income communities, and empowerment of low-income families and individuals in rural and urban areas to become fully self-sufficient. Let's reflect on some critical questions regarding these three points. Think about each of these and ask yourself, are we doing this? And how do we know we are doing this? What is your agency's mission statement and does it include these three focuses? It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand the powers and limitations of the Board of Directors and the stated purposes and intended practices of an anti-poverty organization. Whether you serve on a private CAA governing board or a public CAA advisory board, your agency's employee handbook, fiscal policies, and board bylaws are unique to your agency. It is your responsibility to read and review these documents to become familiar with your agency culture and your responsibilities and limitations as a member of the governing or advisory board. Next, as a board member, you should be aware of the legislation, statutes, and laws that mandate community action structure and operations, which will be noted during this presentation. Another area of CAA operations that are connected to the compliance is the CSBG Organizational Standards, also known as IM138. The relevant standards related to CAA board actions will be referenced throughout this presentation. Please note that although the standards are referred to as CSBG, these standards are intended for the entire agency. Take the time to orient yourself with some of the details of these two laws and the CSBG Organizational Standards, IM138, noting that the standards apply to both private and public CAAs, but the language may vary given the agency status, Public Law 105-285, the Community Services Block Grant, CSBG Act, and 20 ILCS 625, the Illinois Economic Opportunity Act. The CSBG organizational standards serve as guidance for both private and public agencies to organize, provide services, comply with legal requirements, and provide continuity across the entire community action network. To help us understand and navigate the standards, let's first look at the three sections and the categories within those sections. Maximum Feasible Participation. Category one, Customer Input and Involvement. Category 2, Community Engagement. Category 3, Community Assessment. Vision and Direction. Category 4, Organizational Leadership. Category 5, Board Governance. Category 6, Strategic Planning. Operations and Accountability. Category 7, Human Resource Management. Category 8, Financial Operations and Oversight. Category 9, Data Analysis. Each of these sections and categories are vital to the success of the agency, with this presentation focused primarily on Category 5, Board Governance. 
Our attention to the well-being of the agency as the leaders of agency vision and direction sets the tone, applies the mission, and ensures the agency is equipped and ready to meet the demands of the communities, families, and individuals that are in need of assistance from community action. In addition to the Community Services Block Grant Act and the Illinois Economic Opportunity Act, here are some action steps to guide your thinking and approach as a board member. Bylaws are rules and regulations enacted by the agency to provide a framework for its operation and management. Bylaws are important to ensure that Illinois legal and statutory requirements regarding your organization are being met. A good practice for you as a board member is to review these routinely. An important function of the bylaws stipulates when board meetings are held and what are the appropriate actions of the board and are mandated by the Private Agency Organizational Standard 5.3. The organization's bylaws have been reviewed by an attorney within the past five years. This standard is not applicable to public CAAs. A unique aspect of community action governance is the makeup of the board. Since 1968, local community action agencies have been required to have tripartite governing boards. What exactly is a tripartite board, and why is it so important? Organizational Standard 5.1 tells us the makeup of a tripartite board. Tripartite means consisting of three parts. For our purposes, a community action board must be comprised of at least one-third representation of the low-income community, exactly one-third representation of public officials, and the remainder is comprised of private businesses or organizations. The board composition ensures that all interests in community action are equal and ensures maximum feasible participation. In other words, giving a voice to individuals and groups impacted by poverty. Effective tripartite boards reflect and promote the unique anti-poverty leadership, action, and mobilization responsibilities assigned by law to community action agencies. Boards are responsible for assuring that agencies continue to assess and respond to the causes and conditions of poverty in their community, achieve anticipated family and community outcomes, and remain administratively and fiscally sound. Boards establish bylaws to define how an organization will be managed and how it will run. They determine which staff and board members have authority and decision-making responsibilities and how those responsibilities should be carried out. The bylaws are the first place to look to ensure that the way board meetings are called, the way meetings are conducted, the way they take action, and the way they take records are in place. If the board allows for electronic voting and or remote meetings via email, remote platform, or teleconference, this process should be a part of the bylaws. The bylaws should also contain information about the following issues. Conflict of Interest Standard 5.6. When I think of conflict of interest, the old saying, you can't mix business with pleasure comes to mind. Generally, if you or your family member or close professional associate have a personal interest in a business or a grant or any other business that comes before the board, you cannot participate in any decision-making process. Why? It is unethical and could impact the legal operations of the board. Indemnification refers to protection against damage, loss, or injury. In Illinois, the Illinois Nonprofit Corporation statute provides indemnification coverage for individuals serving on nonprofit boards with compensation. However, it is always good practice to acquire additional indemnification coverage, typically packaged by insurance companies as directors and officers' liability. Another good practice is to be aware of all other types of insurance that can protect your CAA, including general liability, auto, workers' compensation, cyber insurance, employment practices, and if you operate a weatherization program, pollution occurrence insurance.